Hello there, today we're going to be getting right on into it. Jumping over into, uh, in this case, the Airbus A321, but this really can be done in any aircraft, any simulator. And you can see here, we've already reached our top of descent. So today we're going to take a look at, it's going to be the first in a series of strange and unusual approaches, real world approaches that are re replicated here in the sim. Some may be difficult some may just be difficult in that there are a lot of steps for the autopilot to do which you know as far as the pilot goes doesn't really make it difficult for him or her it's just uh you know th th there's a lot of hoops for the autopilot to jump through either way we're going to take a look at that today so we're currently at cruise and if we zoom in a little bit on the nd we're about to drop in onto the airway now innsbruck we're going to take a little look here has got three stars and it's going to depend on where it is that you're coming from, together with up to a point which runway is in use. Uh, so if you are coming from Eastern Europe, so Poland, Russia way, um, or anything that, you know, a little close potentially, you'll be coming through Salzburg here. Now this is known as the SBG3 Alpha, so this is the star. That's going to spit you out at RTT or Rattenberg NDB. There is a hold there. We've also got Nanit here. That's going to be more the Italian style approaches, Africa's. We've also got Tulsi, uh, which could be central Germany. Um, got a couple more over here. Um, Rattenberg here, potentially feeding on into Elman, which is going to bring you, depending on here, by the way, we've got Innsbruck in the middle. We'll take a look. Depends on whether you're on the east side or the west side. Again, winds on which, on, you know, which way is the wind blowing? and which side of the continent are you coming from typically you're going to be certainly you know germany france uk or if you're coming from further afield like the us you're going to be dropping in on one of these two exibix or made bravo which one is it they look almost identical well i was interested as well so i put my detective hat on came over to the maps view and here if we take a look and zoom in on the airways here we see them here's exibix here's made up we see they are close together indeed just nine nautical miles separating the two but what we can see here they're on completely different airways the exibix comes in on the lima 607 airway and if we take a look at made up here that brings you through or rather you come through the mike 738 airway and uh, and so that's the reason there so two different airways gonna drop you off at two different fixes and those fixes form the beginning of the star we're gonna be coming through the made up uh, sorry through the exibix uh, we're gonna be coming through the arrival on the exibix plate um, so just a real quick recap on the cat so we'll be coming through Bemke first of all, and then we'll be grabbing the Lima 607 onto Exibix. Now I'm just grabbing this one for the sake of, you know, being on the airway. But in reality, clearly your aircraft isn't going to be just flying over from Munich. You'll be going to come in from a little further. I mean, you could come in from Munich, but uh, regardless, it's time for me to drop down just before I do. Uh, I am just going to put in a little bit of a course deviation there to buy myself a little bit of time. You see here, I'm up at 30,000 feet. So let's uh, click away just to buy myself a little bit of time. The first thing that I want to look at on this uh, airport page, by the way, one more star here. And that is simply if you're coming through to Elman and we need to come around to the other side. This is a new um, arrivals here. It never used to be uh, quite like this. Through Elman comes over to the other side includes the waypoints Breno that was there and that brings you to Rattenberg so whichever way you're coming from whether you arrive at Rattenberg or you arrive at Elman you've got a connection between the two as well so here you see is Rattenberg to Elman and on this start is Elman over to Rattenberg those are the two points where then you begin your approach into the runway let's have a look at that the one that we're going to look at, I'm not going to go through every single one, there'd be too many. There's about six or seven, it would make it for a long video. We've gone through every star, I think that's enough. What's important to recognise here, we're taking a look at the RNP 26 Echo and we will be circling to land because that just adds a little bit of something to it. 
the uh, the approach here begins at RTT, which we know is Rattenberg, the Rattenberg NDB. And again, we're talking here, not uh, Zulu, sorry, what am I talking about? Here we go. The Rattenberg one, it's the RNP Echo 26. LPV, LPV is the... Uh, is the performer is the improved vertical performance thing so the difference really between rnav lnav and an lpv approach is the lpv approach is as most accurate as you can get of a version of lnav vnav it brings the accuracy right down it's something like six or six or eight meters it's really really precise it's not far off a precision approach although it's not classed as a precision again our you know your rnavs and your rnps are not yet quite up there with the ils's but it's the next best thing and that's why as well you've got your your was uh, type codes there all right so whichever star you're on doesn't matter we need to wind up here at rattenberg and so the only way to get to rattenberg from Elman is first of all to get to Elman. Well, we know we're coming through Exibix, and so we can start and build clear. The controller's going to give us this, but in our mind's eye, we can think, right, well, Exibix is our final waypoint. Then we need to be to Elman. That brings us to here. Now, we can't cut across here uh, to Rattenberg. We see this as a one way. We need to come around the other side. That brings us from here to here to here to here to here to here to here. There's Rattenberg. Once we're at Rattenberg, then we can begin this approach. Controller may just give you radar vectors and give you a shortcut, but let's assume they're busy, there's a big event on, and they're just stacking everybody up in the in the way that is prescribed in the procedures. And so what we're going to do now, uh, to save a bit of time, direct Exibix. And so I'm just going to hide that. Once we're on the way, uh, we'll, we'll start looking at... Um, the approach procedures. So direct Exibix is now in. Airbus is uh, telling us that we're at the top of descent, we know. Now there's nothing else in there yet. We've got a discontinuity and then we see Exibix and then Innsbruck, Lowy, yeah, Lima, Oscar, Whiskey, India. That's because we haven't told it that's what we want to do yet. And so let's have a look how we can build that up. So I'm going to select Lowy as our destination, come over to the arrivals. And, of course, they start with the approaches first, being uh, Airbus. Boeing, sometimes let you, let, let you select your stars first. We already know we want the RNP Echo 26. We will be circling to land at the end as well. We'll take a, a closer look at that in a minute. Let's just get the basics set up. We see this is legit for categories A, B and C, not D. So if you're in your heavies, this one won't apply. So let's look then for RNP Echo 26. Airbus, so at least the toll list for now is going to list that as the RNAV 26 Echo, which is it's the same thing. So just make sure you get your RN at the start. You've got the right runway number, so 26 versus 08, right? And then it's the letter matches at the end. So providing that matches, you can forget about the fact that sometimes RNP and RN or RNV RN or RNAV as it's known, um, to say they're used in interchangeably is not entirely accurate accurate but you know it's beyond the scope of this video suffice to say if it's rnp or rnav or rnv as long as the runway match and the letter at the end matches you'll be good to go so let's go for the rnav echo now we've got their choice on stars and of course it's, it's kind of building it backwards way up it's doing the approach first and the star second even though when we're flying we're doing the star first and the approach second um so the star here we want to be from exibix we know it's going to be one of these. We've got the Elman 1 Alpha and the Breno 4 Bravo. We can see there's a slight shortcut on the Alpha uh, version. There may or may not be a specific um, restriction to that. It's not jumping out at me. It may just be what the controller gives you. Um, let's go then with... Let's go with the Elman 1 Alpha. That seems to be... Uh, nice and easy there so we'll select that now we've got a via option how many just the one no via or via whiskey india 610 well how do we know which one we need well let's see if we can find whiskey india 610 first of all here is whiskey india 610 we see there is a disconnection between rtt 
and Whiskey India 610. Yeah, there's a connection that leads you up for the missed approach, but not the other way. So we do need the Via in, so we'll select that. Before I hit OK, let's just close that off. We'll switch over to the plan mode. We'll zoom in just to the 40 range bit and let's just temp it in there on the left side. I'm going to scroll through here. So here's Elmham. We scroll on through. Whiskey India 601. This is to the south, right? So if I zoom out a bit more, it should be a little more obvious. That's probably too far. Here we go. So Innsbruck's right here. Here's Exibix over to the left-hand side. Here's Elman, the west, right? And uh, let's... Over here, here's the west. Again, Innsbruck there in the middle. We're going to be skirting around the south side here. Here's Rattenberg, and then from Rattenberg on into the... Via the Whiskey 610. So skirting around the south. Over to Rattenberg. You can just about see RTT there. And if I zoom in a little bit... We scroll through. There's Rattenberg. There's Whiskey India 610. You see there is a disco between the two. I'm just going to OK that and just clear out the disco. Rig those two up. OK. And like that, we're sorted. There is technically, if we take a look at this, a hold required. So do you know what? What I just did was completely wrong. For a tutorial, I shouldn't have deleted that discontinuity because there was a hold at Rattenberg. So we would do the hold, then we would be inbound on the... If we see, if we see here the hold, it's outbound 045, it's a right-hander. Inbound 225, that inbound would then connect us right up with 610 without having this crazy turn. So what I've done there is... Uh, not correct. Let's see if we can... Are there, can we uh, correct that behind the time without having to rebuild? I'll tell you what. RTT, I'm going to put in a hold. Let's see if we can build that hold correctly. So the inbound course we know is 225. It's not 45. Why? Because that's outbound. It's taken us away from the fix. So it's 225. We can see it's a right-hander, so that's fine. And then the other option is a, either a time or a distance. Does it say anything? No. Well, I'm going to go with the default, one minute. That means when we're wings level, these legs here are going to be one minute, which is going to vary a bit depending on what speed. The faster we are, clearly, the further that makes it. So let's accept that. We'll temp that in. And so now we see it. Uh, our arrival, Elmer 1 Alpha. There's Rattenberg, the right hand hold. And then from Rattenberg on into Whiskey India 610. So we can fix it. There we go. Thrown that in there for free. All right, let's see how we're doing then, because we're probably about time we need to start descending. There is a little disco here between Exibix and Elmum. I'm just going to connect that straight up. We can see it's there. It's just a, it's a one shot leg. Uh, so just flight plan to get it to the top. There's the disco between Exibix and Elmem. I'm just going to delete it. Thus, insert. There we go. All right. Autopilot's happy with that. Let's have a look at descending where we can see there's a bunch of MSAs for the area. But importantly, here we see Elmem 13,000 or above. Does that change as we're going to go around the south side here? Notice the very bottom there is for coming over the other way. I, I'm not sure if I mentioned that before. Um, Breno does seem to have the option to split either way. Um, so yeah, Elmer 1 Alpha. We can see there our altitude has to be 14,000 or above. We see there's also these 14,000 foot restrictions here. Again, the line underneath means 14,000 or above. Um, so at this point, I'm going to drop down to 14,000. We know we can do that. And let's go managed as well. So I'm going to push that in, get the dot. I'm going to go managed on the speed as well. Let uh, Airbus figure out how it wants us uh, to drop down there. All right. While we're waiting for this star to take its... Uh Interestingly, and now it's accelerating for the descent. I did have us slowed up a little bit. While it's descending on down, we'll take a look at the approach because it is going to take a moment or two. And I could have just briefed us on the ground, but that, that would have just been boring. Bit of pressure when you've got to try and do it in the air. Um, so I'm going to clear out all the irrelevant ones that we don't need as with regards to the stars. 
this one can go. We've got the two Bravo. That is the one that we're, we're doing. So I'm going to keep this star on the screen. The way I like to set up my um, Avi tab is if we're coming in to land the star first, because it's in the order that we're going, right? Star first, approach second, and then the airport page third. Sometimes the approach can be broken up into two parts. If that is the case, then it's star first, approach part one next, approach part two after that, and then the airport page, you know? So you've got the, the four tabs in order of what you need, but again, do it any way that you like. If you're somebody that likes to have a million tabs open, go for it. So we're coming then over to RCT. Now, some people say, you know, oh, raw data, tune in the raw data. We know Airbus, do, uh, Airbus doesn't. RTT or 303 on the frequency there. So let's do that just so we've done it. Uh, radio there. RTT has indeed auto-tune. So this version of the Tolis 321 does auto-tune. They're in small letters, which means it's auto-tuned. I'm going to make them into big letters just so Airbus, for whatever random reason, doesn't decide to detune them. Uh, we'll just do it on... Well, we'll do it on one side. We'll leave the other as is. Next thing then, let's come over to the approach. We've already discussed we're going to be doing the RNP Echo 26 LPV. Why this one? Because... Not only does it give us this nice approach in between the canyon, uh, the valleys, I call it canyon, they're not really, valleys and mountains, is that it also allows for a circle to land at the end. There's a couple of other approaches at least that bring you right on through in a similar fashion that do not allow a circle to land. And once again, you can see ABC, we're legit to do it. We need to see pages 10 and 9. Just before we do, notice here we've got a few different minimums depending on the exact conditions. How good are we able to climb? Clearly, if we can climb at a minimum of 7.1%, our minimums are going to be lower. The guy who's going to struggle at 2.5, maybe he's very heavy, got a failed engine, whatever, he doesn't have quite the same luxury. His minimums are therefore much higher. Because it's mountainous terrain and uneven, I don't like to use radio minimums for that because you're going to be running into hills that are going to be setting off your minimums even though you're well clear. So I'm going to go for the barometric there, 3300. You can knock yourself out reading the RVRs here. Uh, so basically, how foggy is it? Um, there's also some restrictions that don't really affect us here in X-Plane. I'll just briefly mention them just, just for, the, for the sake of it. Uh, noise abatement procedures, low visibility, uh, reduced runway separation, because of course there's a glider runway right next door to it. They're basically saying stuff like, oh, if the fog's worse than this, you won't even be given an approach. Uh, weight turbulence, again, stuff as, at least for now is not simulated in as far as i know any of the flight simulators dcs has weight turbulence but they don't got rnp approaches into innsbruck so it doesn't really matter uh Bork's landing procedure i like how they uh, uh bought landing procedure yeah uh, basically saying in order for you to come in here it's a, it's a crew certification approach anyway and it, and it actually goes through um, there's about five approaches that somebody has to do and demonstrate to an instructor before they'll say, yeah, you've got your certification, you're cleared to come here. Again, it's not just one that anybody can come to in, in real life. Least of all, if you've watched some random dude uh, try and demonstrate it on X-Plane. Right, zooming in a little bit. So, with that said... Let's continue here. So Rattenberg is, we're going to be starting at 9,500, I believe. Yeah, so Rattenberg as well is 9.5. We see before there we've got these restrictions at 14,000. You can see us coming there. I'll leave the icon on for today. I usually turn it off because it feels like cheating. But because the Airbus knows exactly where it is anyway, and it's for a tutorial, we'll leave it on. 14,000 or above, and... Because we're descending with the FMC, or the Muk-Doo, because it's uh, Airbus, uh, we'll be able, uh, 
you know, the restrictions are already in here. Granted, we didn't check them, but, you know, we know that they're in there. Um, we can see by these little pink stars here, if we take a closer look, there, for example, is an altitude restriction. Umweg at 12,000 or above. Well, there's Umweg, there's 12,000 or above. So we know it's in. I'm going to preset my altitude to 9.5 because I know that the FMC or the McDo, providing we're in managed mode, which we are, is going to take care of all that. So I'm going to drop us down to 10, change the setting from uh, thousands to 100. There we go. 9.5. Probably not legal, but, you know, we're in the sim. We know the sim takes care of these, uh, so, you know, they call what they call them, the soft deck versus the hard deck or something like that when we're you know because the, the fmc or the mcdo is a soft you know soft altitude floor whereas this is always your hard floor you know no matter what this is doing you can't go lower than this unless you explicitly tell it to in using the vertical speed when you're already there either way we're getting further and further away from what we should be doing so once we're at Rattenberg, we're in the hold. We'll at some point exit the hold. Real careful how I say that one. And then it's direct to Whiskey India 610. Again, also at 9,500 feet. Those wanting uh, to know where do you get these charts from? Well, of course, there is Navigraph. We know you have to pay for that. Um, you could try... Um, you know, it would not, I would certainly not advise pausing the video and screenshotting. I'm not going to say, uh, that you should do that. Definitely not. But if somebody were desperate, I'm sure they could somehow try and piece that together. It's a shame it blurs a little bit. So, and of course you can find charts through some other means. Chart Fox is one that's completely free, although you need to register, uh, through VATSIM to be able to have access to that. I'm sure that people have uploaded individual uh, images of these plates. Um, so yeah, there's various ways and means that you can get them. After Whiskey India, so this here of course is the vertical profile, right? This here is just like a top-down satellite view. We've got our minimums here, although we will be flying with accordance to the procedures. And so, you know, the, the minimums only really become applicable if we have to divert away from the procedure the procedure clearly dealing with the minimums um so whiskey india 610 is 9.5 then we've got another one whiskey india uh, the number of the beast there at 9000 that's going to be this point here then we're descending on down to whiskey india 611 at 7.2 6.3 at whiskey india 612 we also got the distance separations here so for this one hey, we're gonna have to step on it for this um <laughs> 1.2 for 500 feet okay this one here is quite a drop 1800 feet 4.2 miles so may even want to be thinking about using the boards or potentially you know get flaps too maybe if you're in an airbus here we got 900 feet to lose in 2.1 miles um then what we're talking 600 feet uh, 550 600 which is more like it 2.2 and at whiskey india 613 we're on the final descent down 9.1 plus uh, 0 0.9 there so it's a 10 mile final we see that there from whiskey india 613 that final we see here is at 3.57 degrees which means if we're doing 140 knots ground speed we're going to be losing just shy of 900 feet a minute uh, so we'll have to see speaking of which let's take a look at setting up our approach i know really this is not uh, to do with the airbus but more the approach but you know setting up the approach info on an airbus is kind of part and parcel so i've got real world weather on at the minute i've just grabbed the atis before i uh, hit record Come over to the performance to the approach q &H down there today is 10:31 for you americans of course we use uh they're using altimeters 2902 or whatever you're dealing with q &H here so 10:31 slightly higher than usual temperature is minus one um so below uh below freezing down there uh winds are two knots and variable 
when it's variable winds, I don't think you can just put V in, can you? Or, or who knows? No, it's, I, I guess it took V in, interpret it as zero. So we'll leave it in as zero. Hello, Kiwinus. Um, nice to see you in chat. Unfortunately, I'm task saturated on this one. I won't be able to deal with the chat. Uh, but hello, nice to see you regardless. We've then got the transition flight level. Well, where does that come from? Usually it's going to let us know on the star page. And it's going to say it's given to us by ATC. And that makes sense. We've got a lot of high mountainous terrain. The weather's going to vary. Um, so let's just assume transition level is uh, 130. So let's swap over um, to the local, which is uh, 1031. So we've got it in there. Same as Munich then, which makes sense. We're not too far away. And last but not least, it's the minimums. Well, we discussed that. We was going to go barometric for the reasons that we didn't want the radal getting triggered by some of this higher terrain over here. Um, so I'm going to go with 3300 there. Um, no need to do what some airlines do and arbitrarily whack 50 feet on and then round it off to the nearest 100 and goodness knows what. I mean, why encourage pilots to divert when all the safety stuff's already in? So there we go. With that said and done, it's all sorted. We'll go in with flaps full the default and that's going to give us an approach speed today. 146 and a landing of 141. So if we glance at this again, we can see, well, 140 is going to be 885, 160 is 1011, 150 in the middle would be 900 and change. We know we're to the, uh, to the left of that. So at a glance, we can say roughly 930 ish, 940 feet a minute on the VS. If it's anything let's just say below 880 or above 1000 we know we've got something wrong somewhere and again this is based on the ground speed so if our ground speed's higher of course you know we'll, we'll adjust accordingly by approach infos in i'm going to put the flight plan stuff back on my side you may also wish to to set yourself up with some intel and again we are looking to do the circle to land by this control a little bit uh, sticky there for some reason aircraft starting to slow down have we got the signs on yeah just left them on from before let's put the wing lights turn off put the landing lights on as well nose light will be our clear to land all right circle to land then when does that break off well we need to refer to 1910 so let's have a little look 19 approach 1910 visual circle to land and a continued so we'll load both of these so coming down at some point we need to break off this approach because we're going to circle to land clearly when does that happen when the dude outside I, I hope you can't hear it on the recording but i'm telling you there's a dude outside with a fan belt that's loose he's there every day it's probably the same dude with the car alarm i need to have a, I had a word with him on New Year's Day, which was just... It just pissed me off hearing it. Right. Coming in then. Here we go. So on the approach, we know we're going to be somehow on this approach. We've got a break off here at this point. What is this point? Well, we see it's not got a name for starters. So we're going to have to try and figure out where it is. And unfortunately, Airbus doesn't allow you to be real precise with the distances. And we have to be. 4.2 from OEV or 6.5 from OEJ. Well, I can have to go with 4.2 OEV and just recognize that the distance is going to be slightly off. I'm going to put that in on the marker. Where is OEV? Well, it's the localizer here. So I'm going to put a range ring down on the ND 4.2 miles or 4 miles from OEV because we can't go 4.2. By the way, you can go 4.2 on the Boeings. They let you go get to the point one. So a little bit of a benefit there. Although with the Airbus, we get to very easily fly tracks. And so there's that as well. Either way, OEV, let's see if we can get that point down. We could be really precise and try and um, guesstimate a fix and back course it. You know what? Mm, I realize it's... Uh, let's. I don't know if it's possible. Let's have a look. OEV. 
What's the reciprocal of 254? It's going to be 74 on a distance of 4.2. That's probably not going to let me have it. It may let me have 4. Let's try. I'll uh, zoom this down to a more suitable size. So we're currently in the hold now at Rattenberg at 10,000, which is per the procedure. Just waiting for us to want to the exit the hold there. So flight plan. What? Well, so I'm thinking this triangle. Clearly, the way I would normally do it, I'd put a range ring around OEV. And once I see that ring, that's going to be my cue. Right, you need to exit the approach. I'm just going to... i tell you what, I'm going to do that for brevity's sake. Let's just not overcomplicate the matter. So I'm going to come over to the very end here, I believe. Uh, what was it, the left? Yeah, there we go. Get onto the fix info. The fix here, OEV. And again, the reason I'm selecting it is it's the nearest one that's to the full nearest mile. We've got two. OEJ is half a mile off. And because I can't be any more precise than the nearest mile. So Octa, o Oscar Echo Vicar, Victor, there we go. Radius, four miles. In it goes. If we come over to the plan page move uh, towards the runway here we see it this little blue ring is what I've just created it's a four mile ring centered on Oscar Echo Victor Oscar Echo Victor so I know when I'm coming down here and I get towards that blue dotted line plus 0 0.02 right because I could only make the ring four miles I need to be coming away and coming away on heading 230 until I'm here then I need to turn right onto a heading of 264. I'm going to be skirting right alongside this terrain here, this mountainous terrain. I'm probably going to be getting jit whiz warnings, so I need to have visual. And to do a circle to land, you need to have visual of the airfield the entire time. Yeah, you can't do it in the fog or, or if you, you know, your minimums and you haven't broken out the bottom of the clouds. Clearly, you can't do this. That's any circle to land. We have to be able to see it. This continues then on a head in, or track rather, 264, all the way until we're here. Well, where's here? Distance 14.1 from OEJ. So the nearest one now is OEJ to the nearest full mile. Um, so that's going to be my second fix. So again, I'm going to click on the left here. Uh, not allowed, of course. Flight plan. Click on the left. Come over to fix info. We've used one of them over to the next page, and I'm going to put that in. Oscar Echo Juliet, O-E-J. There we go. Which one are you talking about? Well, both of these actually refer to the same thing. It's interesting that the top one refers to the physical beacon on the ground. The second one refers to the place where the beacon would be, but you can see they're exactly the same place. That long distance matches. Let's go with the physical beacon, why not? Then we have the radius again. Down here, we can only go to the full, so I'm going to go with 14. Drop that in there. Just mental note, it's a smidgen after we cross the blue line. It's 0.1 of a nautical mile. In terms of an aircraft on approach speed, that's going to be, what, a second? Maybe slightly under. And with that, we're sorted. And so if we take another look now at the flight plan and scroll through our plan, we can start and see this take shape. So we're coming down this green line. We break off from the green line when we're inside that first circle. We then start following the procedures here. Left, 230 track until we're basically scraping on the end, on the edge of the mountainous valley here. There's also an Innsbruck, Innsbruck NDB 420, which almost looks like it's in line, but not quite. That if we if i can zoom in even more on the map here uh, this dial is kind of off on when you're viewing it on the side all of that is going to take place coming down here it's going to be this bit then we're scraping along the valley is going to be basically here that's this bit 
this turn here at 14.1 is at the edge of this blue uh, sorry the larger of the blue remember the larger of the blue was 14 nautical miles away centered on oscar echo juliet and we know it's the larger one because the circle is far bigger you know if we were to zoom oh my goodness they need to sort that out there we can see it's the larger of the two the other one was just four miles away so once we cross the larger of the two there which is going to happen somewhere down here at that point we circle straight on round and into land runway 08 to set up for runway 08 at least insofar as the uh, mcdo is concerned we need to create a secondary flight plan so the way i'm going to do that select secondary i'm going to copy the active just to get started and then where it says low e26 i'm going to select that just on the arrivals and i'm just looking not for any of these i'm just going literally for runway 08 there we go no procedure and ideally no star either no via no nothing no transition and accept that now that's in as my secondary so what i'm going to do ideally as i'm circling when i've got a moment to think about it i'm going to switch flight plans from the front from the primary to the secondary so the airbus knows i'm not landing on 26 which again is the approach we'll be doing initially i'm actually circling around for 2a it's not like completely essential it would be if you were doing this for real but in the sim we'll see if we can do it so with all of that done i think i've covered most of the bases i'm sure there's uh plenty of people there uh, professional wise thinking oh you've missed such and such you know but for a sim i think we're gonna do pretty all right there so let's push out the range a little bit back to the arc yeah it's when you're viewing it from the side the switches stick when you're viewing it from well where the pilot sits they seem to work fine all right so we're at 9.5 we're in the hold and we're ready to exit and we've got the option here for the immediate exit well we're already turning towards rtt but let's just exit now for good measure we've got the option to resume but we don't want to and so at this point now it's just a case of following the procedure around where we will exit we've got the q and h set there for 10:31, which i'm not sure actually we in entered into the performance did we or did we oh yeah we did I beg your pardon it's in there 10 31 okay that awkward little pause where i always think the game's gonna crash thankfully it didn't may also be worth to tune these in physically again i, I realize the airbus knows where it is but for the you know for the so-called raw data stuff we've got oej we're making use of that for one of the markers we've got oev we're using that for the other um, so 109, so OEJ, OEV, let's try and remember that. OEJ, OEV. So radios. You can see it's tuned in on separate VORs. OEJ, I'll put that on my side. Oh, it doesn't even know where it is, that's unfortunate. Uh, OEV, how about that one? No, I think actually though, one of them is... Uh, a local light it's this one oev they're both localizers that's why they're not tuning in on the vor never mind that's fine right so coming up to rattenberg we're at 9.5 or above yes q and h is set to 10 31 yes so what we're about to do is exit the hold here and at that point it's direct to whiskey india 610 and we know we can stay at 9.5 throughout that procedure after that there's a lot of downhills and some of which is relatively steep and uh, so we need to be certainly ready on the boards uh, or with the speed you see the autopilot is currently keeping us at green dot speed which is uh, 220 so here we go then about to move on through i'm going to assume atc has cleared us to land so we'll put the uh we'll put the lights on we'll put the signs on forget about that just focus on the flying so here's the turn now to whiskey india 610 and looks like the descent is continuing a bit now to 9.5 And it's uh, 
going to let the autopilot help us out until we need to start that circle to land procedure. And I think just to help me out at that point, I'll be using the bird to do it. So here's 9.5. And there's Whiskey India 610 at 9.5. QNH is blinking because... Did we tell it... Uh, what our uh, all right trans uh, uh, five zero we we did say oh we, we were going to put because again it was handed to us by ATC if you remember according to the charts we were going to assume they were going to give that at thirteen thousand the reason I'm typing that in is to stop this flashing and see that's been fixed now again this in we don't have to be at nine point five we need to be nine point five or above we see that little plus there and we're basically right on it the, the autopilot's bringing us right there and now we're not going to descend because we've not told it to we know we need to so let's start the descent I'm just going to give it a couple of thousands push it in for manage down we go and I think I'm going to go flaps one as well. We're below the eyebrows. We've got about 20 knots to play with. If the aircraft starts running away with itself, we'll use the boards. We can see there's a there's a stop there at nine. Now, what point do we start? So how high will we be to circle to land? Usually, usually you don't go below the circle to land minimums. Do they have that published or is it just the minimums overall? Let's have a look here. There we go. Depends on how good we are at climbing. 3.7. In other words, uh, whereas we descend here, we can't... Uh, we can't descend below 3.7 until... Now, taking a look at here, the, uh, the other one. This here looks like... <laughs> the circling of a circling so we're approaching here coming through and potentially what well certainly not doesn't apply to our approach you know we're coming from this way this could be for the other runway let's focus on the issue at hand and again down to 3.7 here we are at 8,000. That's what we've got set in. So I'm going to dial this all the way down. I'll just push that again to so 3.7. Again, we can't descend below that anyways until we're well within the circle procedure. And we're well on the way. So here we see that blue dotted line. That's where we need to pull away. And I'm going to make a, just a handwritten note because it's going to come real quick. And that is... 230 on the track. We see the height 3.7. Until we're here, then it's 264 staying at uh, 3.7. Then we start the circle to final, and that's probably going to be the point that we can start descending. You see, there's no further restriction there. There is a note here, number one. And I think, if I remember, that refers to a church that's like a visual... Yeah, a visual cue. There's a church for the right-hand turn. I don't think we're going to see that in X-Plane, at least not unless you've got special scenery. Um, but in any case, we've got the position where it needs to happen uh, on the ND. So down we go. Let's zoom in now, getting real close. I'm going to go flaps too. You see the speed starting to run away with itself, and we've got less than five miles to go until we need to make this turn. Don't forget the turn is slightly larger than that circle. It's 4.2, not four miles, which was what this blue circle is. I'm going to guess that Whiskey India 103 is more or less exactly where it needs to be. I'm going to dump the gear as well to assist with our uh, slowing. And we need to be geared down flaps three anyway for the start of a circle to land. So about two miles to go. I'm going to get the bird ready and dial the track ready, which is 230. 
We're not going to pull the switch until, but we're very close. Let's go flaps three then. We're below the eyebrows. Going to go auto brake medium. Let's arm the boards. And we're almost there. Three, two, one. I'm going to pull it now. I'm just going to reduce this uh, descent rate. I don't think we need to be as aggressive. Again, we can't descend below 3.7 anyway. So there we are. 2.30 on the track. We've got visual with the runway. We've got visual with the terrain. And we're going to fly it until we're right alongside. Again, just that if, if, if you recall here, it's just where, the, where the, this bit of terrain starts to rise. Not this bit here. Clearly, that's a, that turns too tight. It's this here. So right on the edge. See, it's flat here. We've got a bit of a shelf. It's just on the edge of where it's beginning to rise. Starting to approach 3,700 now. And we have to stay there until we start our final turn. I think this is almost close enough. We see it's just about starting to rise here. And so it's a right turn. Whoops, there we go, 264 now. Again, we're ignoring the jit whiz because we do have visual. And there we can see it there. It's almost on the edge. I guess I could move a little bit further over. I actually did that turn really quite quickly. But regardless, I'm gonna just continue pretending that I don't have access to this icon. And so the only way I know that my turn to final begins is this blue dotted line. Again, the larger one, because it's the larger DME arc, um, which is here. The 14.1 the from OEJ, which we typed into the McDo a little while ago. And so at this point, let's ring-a-ding the cabin, tell them we're ready. Flaps full to go, that's it. The only other thing is to tell our aircraft, you know, we're doing the secondary now, so I'm going to hit here to activate the secondary flight plan. That lets the aircraft know we're coming in on runway 08 at Innsbruck. It's just a case of waiting for this uh, blue line. At that point, I am going to start my descent. I'll go flaps full, at least initially. I'll use the uh, flight path angle to make a start. And do we have... Caution terrain. Caution terrain. No obvious missed approach procedure. Caution I will gloss terrain. over that one. Caution terrain. So there we are, we're right on it now. So I'm gonna start the turn. And I'm going to start the descent Caution terrain. very gradually. Caution terrain. Let's go by about half a degree. I'm going to go flaps full. And at this point, again, you should really be having visuals, so we need to be sitting over here. I'm going to disconnect the autopilot. 1,000. Try and land it from the first officer's side. Expecting about a three degree down. Hundred above. One thousand. Sink Minimum. Sink rate. Terrain. 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 We've got it. Terrain. 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 Runway in sight. Terrain. Terrain. I, I didn't even need to come down anything like terrain, as aggressive. Terrain. Terrain, terrain. One right, one white, terrain, three terrain. red. Terrain, there we go. Terrain. Two white, two red. Following the main road terrain, in. Terrain, terrain, terrain. I guess if I'd have been a little further terrain, across, terrain. let's just reset that. Apologies. If I'd have been a little further across, this turn would have been a little tighter. We wouldn't have had to have this correction at the end, but they're not going to have two people on a short final anyway, especially when they're circling to land. Go oh, a little bit too high now. Everything is green. I'm going to try and lose that bit of height. I realise I've got a high rate of descent here. 500. There we go. I'm going to try and ease off my descent now. 400. Two 
300. Actually got four knots ahead, wind. 200. Still a thousand feet a minute and we've still got these whites. Remember it was a bit steeper than 100. normal. I'm going to idle the engines early. 50, 40, 30, 20, retard, 10, 5. And we're down, reverse is deployed. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Innsbruck. I hope you found that one useful. Um, until next time, yeah, the first in a mini series. There's a whole bunch of them that I'm wanting to do. I've got about 20. This one is probably the most famous of them all, so I did want to start with this one. Um, yeah, we'll take a look at some of the other intricacies of some of the others. Until then, take care, wherever you world you may be. Bye-bye.